Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Unfound podcast channel on YouTube. I am, of course, Unfound's host, Ed Dunsel. I hope everybody is doing spectacular. As the title says, this is a, uh, a video map analysis or kind of just a run through uh, of the locations for the disappearance, important locations for the disappearance of Irma McCurchion. This is an episode that came out on January 19th of 2024. Before I get started, I hope you will uh, give this video a thumbs up. I hope you will subscribe to this channel. And uh, if you want to go one step farther, why don't you just hit that join button below and uh, you can contribute to the hard work we do here at Unfound. I would deeply appreciate it. So... Of course, Irma's uh, episode a little different uh, than what you're used to, uh, but it just, of course, kind of went that way. And uh, David had an idea of what he wanted to say, and at some point I was just like, well, I guess we're just going to go with this, and not as uh, facts-rich as you're used to for uh, an interview, but... Maybe it helped you in another way, understanding um, the frustrations of families. Because 90% of what David said in that talk I had with him, 90% of it is what every other guest has said at one point or another. And I don't, we, I don't know if um, we've really had a chance to do that in seven and a half years. So I thought this is the opportunity and, of course, as you heard David say in the very – he wants it out there how frustrated he is about the police and everything else. And I was more than happy to accommodate him. Like I said, though, uh, there was quite a bit that I edited out for legal reasons, privacy reasons, defamatory reasons. Because, like I said, there was no – not a lot of structure to it, and you just never know where it's going to go. And we just – went into some areas that would never make it into a regular type of interview. So what you're looking at here is, and I do, I'm going to have a little analysis uh, of, the, of the the entire disappearance as a whole at, at the end of this. But what you're looking at, it's very simple. These are the two locations that are important to Irma's disappearance. What we have down here is, and this is public information, I'm not releasing any secret information here, but this is where... Um, she and her husband uh, lived alone at the time. The kids were not at home. Uh, this is information that you can find anywhere. And you should, I should, you should know that the husband still lives at this uh, address. The interesting thing is even in 2024, Irma is still considered to be the owner of the house. And uh, yes, it is a coincidence that the episode came out exactly 10 years after she went missing. It wasn't really planned. It's just the way it, it worked out. But 10 years later, her name is the only one that I can find as being the owner of this house, even though he still lives in it, of course, being married, and of course, they got divorced. I'm not saying he's not entitled to be there, but it doesn't seem like he's made any, uh, taken any steps to become the owner of it. And I'm not saying he shouldn't be there. Keep in mind, I'm not saying that. It's just, it's her name, 10 years later, seems a little strange to me, but I've never owned a house. So this is where they lived. And over here, Alonza, A-L-L-A-N-Z-A, at the lakes, is where her car was found. Uh, as you can see there right in the screen, uh, to drive it, it only takes four minutes. Uh, 1.2 miles, and this is the lake. Uh, I kind of got a little confused uh, in the interview when David said that they looked at a lake. Uh, I thought he meant Lake Mead. Maybe they did search at Lake Mead too. I guess that's a possibility. But given the, how much the lake has gone down in the last 10 years and the, the bodies that have been found out there for accident reasons and other, you know, some were murdered. Uh, hers has not been found out there despite Lake Mead dropping a whole lot of feet since she went missing. But the actual lake he was talking about is this one little Lake Sahara Lake, which of course is manufactured. It's um, part of this, you know, manufactured water was put in there and they dug it out to, as part of this community. And so you have people here who actually live on a lake, even though it's right in the center of Las Vegas. And if you're wondering where this is, 
uh, compared to the rest of Las Vegas. I will zoom this out. Um, you can see, I will show you the strip is Red Rock is up here. We'll zoom in here. And uh, the strip is way over here. That is where what we think of Las Vegas, all the hotels, casinos, uh, Fremont Street, now that they have a football stadium, that's all over here. And this is considerably to the west. I have to admit that my really didn't spend a lot of time up in this area of Las Vegas, uh, although certainly I was up and down Sahara, which is right there, and um, a desert in really... Mm, Spent a lot of my time on the eastern more side of town or south side of town. But, um, although business once in a while did take me up in this area, really, you know, you start telling me where this was, I really couldn't think of it off the top of my head. So that's where this area is. And as you heard, we, we know there's probably some video camera there. Unfortunately, they got to it too late. So whether it was Irma or somebody else who put her car there, we will never know. If there was video, it's long gone. Now, you may be wondering, well, what, what is the walking time between these two locations? Let's say that somebody deposited that car, and let's just say hypothetically theorizing that it might have been her husband who did this. 24 minutes. Virtually the same route, almost, that you would drive uh, 1.1 miles instead. 24 minutes uh, after dropping the car off to walk back. To the house, if you were wondering. Now, what of course catches my eye, and maybe I can show this a little bit better, is that what did catch my eye in first looking at this is that is it a coincidence that the place where a car was found is exactly across the lake from where she lived? You know, it's not like wasn't over here or even like down here, like off the screen almost. No, whoever parked that car there, it just happens to be like directly straight across half and half, half the lake on this side. Like it's the most furthest point on the other side of the lake to be on the other side of the lake. Um, I wonder if that's a coincidence or not. That you'll be, that's up to you to decide. But that's where she lived. That's where she was. We have to remember this was a Sunday. Do in people insurance work on Sundays? It seems a little probably uncommon to me, but I don't know what kind of insurance she was doing. Was this some sort of um, assessment in the apartment complex that she got over, got called over there? Was she lured over there by somebody? These things happen. We don't have to just automatically think that her husband uh, did this, even though we have headlines in the Las Vegas Review Journal saying, uh, you know, him saying, I am a suspect in my ex wife's disappearance. So us talking about it, David talking about it and I in the, in our conversation, not unusual, not crazy, certainly not defamatory, but did she get lured over there? Did somebody was say, you know, we got a call and she goes over there and then she was forced or somebody else used her phone to say that there was a funeral and that she needed to go to California and everything else. Stranger things have happened. So my analysis is that Although it's given the money and, and some other things that it's perfectly reasonable to theorize that her husband caused this for some reason. Could have been an accident, could have been planned, any, anywhere in between. Um, women do get lured and uh, you can just Google stories about female real estate agents getting lured to, you know, some guy wants to see a house. They get called there, they get raped, they get murdered. In fact, one of the most well-known disappearances of a female in England, and she's still missing, was exactly that scenario. So it's not as maybe clear-cut when a, uh, a wife or ex-wife goes missing, as we've covered in some other disappearances, in my opinion. And so I think you should uh, consider that. And... Um, I, I, you know, I won't, don't want to say too much here, but I think that you're probably also maybe going to get some other ideas about her disappearance that have nothing to do with her husband as well. You heard about maybe she had a lover or a new boyfriend or how, however you want to term it. Um, 
And maybe we might be open to some other theories along those lines as well. So there you go. Those are the two locations. Not much else to offer regarding maps and routes for this disappearance. Thanks for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up. Consider joining this channel by hitting the button below. And I will talk to you again soon.